Isaiah 58, cry loud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob, their sins. As I was making this video, this is what fell in my spirit. The Lord said, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run with run that read it for the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end it shall speak and not lie though it tarry wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry hallelujah so i what i did was i pulled as many pictures as i could to show you guys exactly what i saw in the vision i feel like if you could see it Maybe it will help you in your heart. Maybe it will resonate a little bit more that we really don't have time to be playing around because what is coming is too deadly for that. So the first thing I saw in the vision was the ground took a big breath as if it was alive. It lifted up and then it blew up. And when it blew up, the ground went jagged like this. And it was full of lava on the inside. Next thing I saw was the sky full of angels. They looked just like this. Thousands and thousands and thousands of them. And I could see them in the light of the moon. And it was so many of them. And they was flying in and out of what looked to me like New York. It reminded me of New York because of all the skyscrapers, but it literally could have been any place. The angels was flying through this city in the nighttime, getting the souls. And I could see the souls was like balls of, of golden orb lights. This is just how many people was dying at one time. It was just full, and the angels were just flying over everywhere, getting them. And my eyes locked on one golden angel flying in front of me. I don't know if he was in charge of this event, but it locked on him. He had golden armor. He had very big wings, just like this picture. And he was flying to that city that looked like New York. Next thing my soul picked up on was like a wall of water. It was so much water. In my spirit, it felt like the ocean stood up like a 20-foot tall person and began to walk itself on land. There's no way you're going to be out able to outswim that. I don't care how good of a swimmer you are. It's just too much water. When this event begins to take place and the ground begins to burst open and the Lord sends the angel of death, they will not spare. And in that moment, you will see yourself and you, it won't matter if you are a size 36 or it won't matter if you are a size six. You just don't want to die. It will not matter if you are rich. It will not matter if you are poor. You just do not want to die. And in that moment, we will finally get what Jesus was telling us. We are one. We are one. Because in that moment, it won't matter who is standing next to you. If you are racist, it won't matter if a black man is standing next to you in that moment. Neither will your political views matter. Neither will your social your social class matter. Neither will the well-dressed matter or the poor dressed matter. Neither will the homeless matter. None of that stuff is going to matter. And the Lord is saying, look at yourself. Look at yourself right now. If it does not matter when the ground opens up, then why does it matter now? The Lord is like, we are all one. And this is what he has been trying to tell us, that mankind has squandered his days on the earth. We have not considered our days in our time on this earth. We have let all these silly things divide us instead of us standing together as one body. And the Bible says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or swords? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor debt, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And the Lord said, but yet we have let these things divide us, racism, politics, social class. 
just the silly things of life. We have squandered our life trying to get perfect bodies, perfect bank accounts, perfect houses, perfect cars. And in doing this, we have pierced ourselves through with many sorrows. And these things have separated us from the love of God. And we have squandered our days on the earth where we should have been loving the Father. We should have been loving the body. Everybody you see is a part of the body of Christ, but we have wasted those days. And do you realize it is exactly 13 days and 13 hours since the Lord told us that the time of shedding has come for the whole world? We was in the comment section trying to figure out what that means. Remember, the Lord said that he is frustrated that when we do give to the poor, we make a spectacle out of it. Look at all the viral videos of people giving to the poor and recording it for views, for clicks, for likes. But the Lord said, I told you when you give alms, do not give them uh, in the public. Let me know, I'm going to read this to you. Matthew chapter six, take heed. That means be careful that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise you have no reward of your father, which is in heaven. Therefore, when you do us your arms, do not sound a trumpet before the as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory of men. God said, do not sign a trumpet. Do not bring attention to yourself when you're doing these things. Don't record videos. Don't put this stuff on videos just so that man can give you praise for doing these things. Truly, I say unto you, they have their reward. But when you do arms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand do it. And that is what God felt disgusted as I was pulling these pictures, that this is what we have become, that we do not have true charity, that we do these things to promote ourselves and in doing so make a spectacle of the people that we are given to. And he is disgusted. He disgusted with that kind of behavior. This says thine, that thine arms may be in secret and thy father which seeth in secret himself will reward you openly and so i googled alms for you to show you that this is exactly what the lord was talking about giving to the poor let me read that definition to you now alms means money or food given to the poor people gifts or donations any form of acts of charity um, as you can see under similar, this is what the Lord is saying. When we do these things, he asks us to do it in secret, not to go viral doing things like this. He said, for when you do that and you blow a trumpet that you may receive praise from men, you have no reward from your father. And it could be very well that people have done this ignorantly, but yet the Lord is still disgusted that we have come to this. Many people did it for likes and views. We have lived foolishly like the blind, and we are found guilty of judgment. And I heard the Lord saying in my spirit, O oh, rich man, you shall not escape. It is going viral how the rich are planning to escape in all of these lavish underground bunkers. But I tell you the truth, the Lord has you written in his word that you were going to do this, that you was going to hide yourself in the mountains and that you was going to try to escape, but you will not escape. The Lord said, I told you it will be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. It is very possible what I witnessed in my vision was the sixth seal being opened because everything from my vision matches revelation from chapter six all the way up to chapter seven when they were sealed in their foreheads and it says and i beheld when he opened the sixth seal and lo there was a great earthquake the ground opened up and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood and it was nighttime in my vision and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth even as a fig tree casted her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountain. These, these bunkers, not going to save you. And said to the mountains 
and the rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. You see how it's matching my vision perfectly, the, the cataclysms and then the, the ceiling in the foreheads. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So after we get sealed in our foreheads, all hell look like it's going to break loose. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And so, you see, I believe that's what I saw. Now, to the rich, you will not escape. It is even written about you in a whole nother book in the Old Testament saying, your money will not save you. In the book of Zephaniah, it says, the great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasted greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty men shall cry there bitterly, lots of tears, because it's so scary. And it says, that day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, and it was very dark, a day of the trumpet. An alarm against the fifth cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men, that they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against the Lord, and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as the dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land will be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. For he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. He's just going to hurry up and burn it up. And the Lord just gave us that revelation uh, on this channel about the day of fire was coming and Elijah coming. This was just five days ago. And seven hours. And so when the Lord speaks, I try to listen. Even if I don't understand it, I'll just go back and ask him again what he's saying until he gives me an understanding. But I never just discredit it. And I felt like this video didn't really get traction because A, people didn't believe it or they just discredited it as, oh, maybe she just reaching. But the Lord is not reaching. The Lord commands us to write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that read it for the vision is yet for an appointed time. I kept saying this day of fire is a set date, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. We have to believe. And so to the rich who is trying to hide in underground bunkers, you're going to find yourself like Korah in the Bible when the ground opened up and swallowed him whole. If you do not know where to find that at, I'm going to show you that right now. But no one is going to escape on this day. We're reading from Numbers chapter 16. Now Korah, the son of Izar, the son of Kohat, and the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abram, and sons of Elib, and on the son of Palit, son of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, you take too much upon you. Seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. 
Wherefore, war, war, war <laughs> then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. So they're saying you're doing too much. You're acting like you all that, but you're really not. You're glorifying yourself. That's what they said to Moses and Aaron. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. And he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy, and will cause him to come near unto him, even him whom he had chosen, will he cause to come near unto him. This do take you senses, Korah and all his company. So he was telling them, well, the Lord will prove who is holy because he will call them to himself on tomorrow. He was like, therefore take your censers and put fire therein and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it will be that the man whom the Lord do it choose, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, you sons of Levi. And Moses said unto Korah, here I pray you, sons of Levi, seemeth it but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself, to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord, and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. And he had brought thee near to him, and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee, and seek ye the priesthood also, for which cause both you and all your company are gathered together against the Lord. And what is Aaron that you murmur against him? Like what have Aaron done to you that you got a problem with him? And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abram, the sons of Elib, which said, we will not come up. Is it a small thing that you has brought us up out of, out of a land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except you make thyself altogether a prince over us. So after the Lord used Moses and Aaron to deliver them out of Egypt, they had a problem submitting to Moses uh, in the wilderness. And so they rose up against him and his brother Aaron and caused all these problems and said, you're not holy. You're just doing too much. And then Moses was like, well, God will show who's holy. He will pick the person himself. Moreover, you have not brought us into a land that floweth with milk with milk and honey, or giving us inheritance of fields and vineyards. While you put out the eyes of these men, we will not come up. And Moses was very angry and said unto the Lord, Respect not you their offering. I have not taken one as from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And Moses said unto Korah, Be you in all your company before the Lord, you and they, and Aaron, tomorrow. So he was like, y'all better come up before the Lord tomorrow. No excuses. And take every man his censer and put incense in them and bring ye before the Lord. Every man his censer, 250 censers, you also and Aaron, each of you his censer. And they took every man his censer and put fire in them and laid incense thereon and stood in the door of the tabern tab tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. So everybody was able to see the glory of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and will you be angry with all the congregation? And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, See, they tried it with the Lord, but God was not having it. Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abram. Say, Move away from it. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest you be consumed in all their sins. Hallelujah. 
So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abram on every side. And Dathan and Abram came out and stood in the door of their tents and their wives and their sons and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own mind. If these men die in the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord have not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth, and swallow them up with all that appertain unto them, with all they have, and they go down quick into the pit, so they go down to the hell quickly, then you will understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass as he had made an end of speaking all these words that the ground clave asunder that was under them and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that appertain unto Korah and all their goods. So the ground just opened them up and swallowed them up alive and i'm here to tell you rich men and all of you that are relying on these doomsday bunkers that the lord is going to do the same thing again and the ground will consume you you will not be able to hide i saw that the ground literally took a breath and breathed and then burst open with fire and the lord said in malachi he's going to make the fire so hot that no root will remain nor a branch and you will be utterly cut off so i'm going to say this one more time for the people in the back malachi chapter 4 for behold the day cometh that burn as an oven and all the proud yea and all that do wickedly shall be stubble means food for the fire and the day that cometh shall burn them up, said the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall, and ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. Literally, the day that I shall do this, said the Lord of hosts. It says, Remember ye the law of Moses my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb, for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Do you see that Elijah will become before the great dreadful day of the Lord's wrath? And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the heart of their children to their fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. The Lord says the day is going to burn hot like an oven. So everything that is beneath the ground, do you hear see all of these building equipments, is going to be utterly consumed and melted and destroyed in the heat of this fire so that no root will remain rich people are you hearing what the father is saying no root nor branch will remain period